In this section of the video, we're going to look at query basics. Queries are how we extract useful information from uh, a database. We can pull from multiple fields, we can do some calculations, uh, we can even insert an update, although we would this, that's beyond the scope of this class. But uh, when I think about creating queries in Access, this is how I think about uh, going about them. I first look and think, okay, what fields do I need in this in this query. Then I think about, okay, well what tables are required uh, that have those fields in them? What tables are required to make this query happen? Then I think about the different criteria that we'll add, and I'll show you what uh, some examples of that. Criteria are used to restrict which uh, records are shown in the final query. And then we'll, we'll deal with showing and sorting. Uh, that kind of happens at the end. I'll show you in a sec. So let's say we wanted to go to our access database and we want we have a sales representatives table and let's say that we wanted to create a query that only returned employees or sales representatives from the midwest region that were hired in 2003 or later so not those that were hired you know in 2002 2005 1998 1997 etc we want only those that were hired in 2003 or later from the Midwest region. So this is a small table. There's only 32 records in this sales reps table. We could, if we wanted to, just go, you know, bit by bit and go and, uh, you know, manually figure that out. But that's kind of a pain, especially if we've got a hundred records or a thousand records or 10,000 or if these is getting added to all the time. So what if we just create a query that will automatically do that for us? Here's how we do that in Access. We're going to go to our Create tab, and then we'll go to our Query Designer. I actually don't recommend the wizard for very much. Uh, the wizard is a little too simplistic for the types of queries that we'll be using. And the Query Designer, it's just easier to get familiar with the Query Designer anyway. So we'll open up the Query Designer, <coughs> and the very first thing that happens is it pops up and it says, okay, well, what tables would you like in your query? If you want to use tables and fields, in a query, you'll have to uh, you'll have to bring them in. Now, one thing I hadn't looked at is I usually, before I start the query, what I usually do is I actually go to the database tools tab, and I look at the relationships here, and I think I look through the fields and the tables and think, okay, what fields do I need in this query? So what we want is we want a list of employee ID, first name, last name, address, city, state, and zip code. So mailing information along with employee ID for all of the employees who are from the Midwest region and who were hired uh, in 2003 or later. So I look at all of these <coughs> tables and look at the fields and figure out, okay, well, where do I get that information from? Well, we can see actually that, that all of that information in this case is actually in the sales reps table. Usually that's not the case for the queries that I'm going to ask you to do. Usually you'll have to pull from multiple tables. But in this case, all of those fields are available in the sales reps table. So now that we know that, we can go and create our query. And we will bring in the sales reps table. Now if we ever wanted to add any additional tables to this query, like orders, we, you know, we could go and bring that in. But right now we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just leave the sales reps table. So I told you that we want to create a query that has the employee ID, first name, last name, address, city, state, and zip code as the fields that are going to be shown in the final query. So the easiest way to do that, we could just go and select them down here uh, in, this, in the, this bottom pane of the query designer. But what's easier is just to double click on the field that we want. So I'm going to bring in employee ID, first name, last address, city, state, and zip code. And you'll notice that all of those fields now, along with the corresponding table, are down here in this, uh, in this columns of the Query Designer window. Now, we only want those fields to show in the final query, but we do also want to limit this list, because right now, if we ran this query, we would see that, oh, all 32 of the sales representatives are in here. And I know for a fact that some of them are not in the Midwest region. For example, you know, these employees over here in, in Washington State, well, that's not the Midwest at all. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of fields simply so that we can use criteria to limit our list to the fields or to the records that we want. So we're going to add first of all region. Now if we run this query again, we'll see all of the region that regions that are on here. And it looks like Indiana is the Midwest region and Pennsylvania is in the Northeast region and Washington's in the Northwest region. And in this in this database there's only three regions represented. So what we'll do here is under region, we want to add a criteria. And the criteria we're going to add, now that region is a text field where there's a two-digit region code, we'll add a criteria of M oops, MW. Now this is a text field, and then so if we click out or hit enter, Access is actually going to put quotes around that criteria because it's a text field and an Access text gets quotes around it. What this criteria will do is when we now run our query, it will only return the records where Midwest, MW, is in the region. And so that's only 19 employees rather than our full 32 that was in this table. Okay, so that's how criteria work. The last part that we want to add is we need another criteria for their hire date. Now if you remember, hire date is just a number. And we could look through here and we could say, okay, well most of the employees were hired after uh, 2003 or, or, but there's a few that weren't. There's a couple down here that weren't. And so we want to eliminate them from the list. Now dates are just numbers. So here's what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna type it in. I'm gonna type in greater than or equal to January 1st to 2003. Okay, so I put it in that little date format. Now Access is going to say, whoa, 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 hold on. Higher date is a date time field. And I think about dates just like I think about text. I put quotes around it. When I have dates, Access, if you hit enter or click out of it, Access is going to say, no, that needs to be surrounded by pound signs. Just the way that Access does things. It's okay if it, uh, if it adds those. So now that we've done that, we will check our results. And we'll run this and say, oh, okay, well now we're down to 16 records. That looks pretty good. We don't have any employees who were hired before 2003. Okay, so we've got our fields, our, our tables, our criteria. The last two things that I uh, worry about are showing and sorting. So we decided that we want employee ID, first name, last name, address, city, state, and zip code in our final query. We only added region and hire date simply because so that they could have criteria that would filter our records and not show as many. But what we can do is we can uncheck this show box right here on the show, show line right here. And if we uncheck those, they're still part of the query. They're still restricting the records that are showing. They just, those columns won't actually show up when we run that query. And the last of, last of all, we need to decide what we're sorting by. Well, we can sort by a number of things, but why don't we sort by last name in ascending order. And now when we run that, we've got our query sorted by last name in ascending order. We have only the fields we want, and these are the employees that are in the Midwest region who were hired in 2003 or more recently. And we'll save our query. We'll just call it query one, that's fine and then we can move on to our next.